um, I anticipate that you're joining us tonight because you are probably part of a blended family or maybe you're about to be, or maybe you're a law student learning more about this area, or you might be a practitioner, you might be a counsellor, therapist, whatever. As usual, um, you know, we welcome you in whatever capacity you're here. It's great, thanks for joining us tonight. Now, we have touched on blended families before. Um, it's estimated that one in three families in the UK um, are blended, which means that they have they have a combination of parents. OK, so a combination of parents, new partners and children, and they've come from different relationships. Now, this is a really good time, I think, for us to be talking about blended families because um, we've got a slightly kind of higher temperature environment we're going into with the festive period, perhaps, um, especially if you're a new blended family, um, if you're you know, new to bringing two households together, um, then this can be a different, a difficult time, perhaps. Um, you might have more uh, areas of uh, disagreement. Um, different families have different routines at this time of year. Christmas can be absolutely joyous. Um, but crikey and happiest of families, there can be challenges. So blended families are already starting sometimes, not always, obviously, sometimes with, um, you know, a bit of a tricky job sometimes at this time of year. Now, I think tonight we're going to be having a bit more of a practical kind of session. Um, obviously, we're not looking at any hard law. Um, and I'm hoping that tonight you'll be able to take away some some tips um, or maybe even just a sense of confidence. Um, you know, after the session. So um, our guest tonight is Nicole Farrow. Now, she's one of the UK's leading mindset coaches. Um, now, her speciality is supporting divorced parents, OK, or divorcing parents. Um, she does do some uncoupling coaching as well. Now, Nicole's going to be offering some advice tonight on how to to build that happy and positive blended family that you're that we're all seeking. Um, she's also going to be answering some questions. Um, I urge you to have a look at her website um, because it's very good. Um, I did have a really good sneaky peek and a bit of a peek around, um, peek around in it earlier today. Um, it's NicoleFarrow.com and I think the girls will probably put the, the website address in the, um, the notes for everybody listening. Um, I think it's great because it shows the diversity of co um, coaching that is available. Um, Nicole also offers family coaching, which I think is important. Um, we are seeking, as I say, that harmonious family dynamic. Um, but tonight we're going to be talking about foundations and principles for successfully blending families, um, creating unity in the common goal idea, um, communication, crikey, we could do hours and hours about talking about communication, can't we? Um, but that notion of creating and respecting boundaries um dealing with conflict um inevitably that kind of um is in all our day-to-day -day lives at the moment um providing emotional support how do you actually forge new traditions and rituals within that perhaps new newly blended family arrangement and and ultimately how do you address adjust to to a new role in yourself but how do you help other people adjust to a new role um so we've got lots to lots to chat through tonight. Um, Nicole's on our radar in particular because she's so enthusiastic about what she does, which is great. Um, normally as well, we talk a lot about family breakdown. Um, if there are any regulars with us tonight, you know I'm a divorce lawyer. I have been for many years and probably will be for many years to come. So my day to day life is dealing with family breakdown. Um, but I think this is a re really important topic to talk about. It's the challenges of forming new families, the challenges that happen after. Um, perhaps you've said goodbye to your lawyer, obviously, and um, you're on a new path. Um, so, as I say, tonight should be practical and hopefully empowering. Um, might even be inspiring. Um, so, housekeeping first, as usual. Let me think about this. Um, for everybody who is on, we are recording tonight's session as usual. And we're going to do uh, the format is is a presentation and then there's going to be Q&A as usual. So we can have a chat. We can ask questions. Feel free to put your questions in the, the question section, uh, the Q&A section um, as we go along and we'll deal with them at the end. Um, feel free also to use the chat function. Uh, we've enabled that. Obviously, it is a safe space. Um, so be respectful to each other, you always are, but I'm obviously obligated to say that. Um, 
and uh, let us know your observations, thoughts, queries, concerns, um, because we're in the right space to chat them through tonight, absolutely. Um, lastly, the last piece of housekeeping, uh, which is especially important for this time of year, is that, as you know, Stow Talks, our content is driven by you. It's by it's driven by the people who let us know what they want to hear about or let us know what type of experts they want us to introduce them to. Um, we will be recovering most probably some of our rather hard hitting topics um, that we've done over the last year. We'll be doing that again, hopefully next year, perhaps divorcing a narcissist, perhaps co control and coercive behaviour before, um, co-parenting as well. Um, but at the moment, the list is, is yet to be kind of determined. Um, let me just see. I think we're back, I think, at the end of January. Uh, and you'll get notification, obviously, as the subject matter then. Traditionally, we always take December off. So uh, next month, you won't, you'll won't. you have to manage without us. Um, OK, so where are we now? Uh, I think, Nicole, if you're ready to go, um, should yeah. I dive the presentation? Is that OK? Yeah, I think absolutely. You're, are you sharing your screen, I think? Or is it the girls? Yeah. I can share mine if I've got access to do so. Yeah, you should have rights to do so. Great. Okay. Awesome. But it's all yours. Great. Um. So hopefully it's gone into. I think I've gone halfway down my presentation. Apologies. You're getting a sneak preview. See. Right. So we're at the top now. So thank you very much for um for having me. Um, I thought it would be helpful to just um set out exactly who I am and why I do this because it's actually. As much as I'm a relationship and family coach, and I have been for six years, um, and prior to that, I did executive coaching, it's the blended family bit is why I do what I do. Um, so for me personally, I was born into a blended family, and um, my parents then divorced when I was two. And of us six siblings, uh, five of us have gone on to have our own divorce as adults, myself included. And so that's really why I focus and I'm particularly passionate about divorce and co-parenting and blending families effectively after divorce and doing it right. Because I have witnessed and experienced as a child what happens when it's not done particularly well. And, you know, in all fairness to my parents, back in the day in the in the late 80s when it was going on, there wasn't coaches and counselling and an awareness around sort of mental and emotional well-being that we have today um so you know they muddled through and in all honesty did a terrible job but they tried um and the result is that you know if you don't get this right then it does have a knock-on effect to the next generation and me and my siblings are proof of that so that's why I'm particularly passionate about you know children divorce co-parenting and blending families properly and I'm really pleased to say that this in fact is my happy blended family now today um this was my daughter's naming day earlier this year and uh to the side of me is my mum and to the other side of me is my stepmom my dad sadly is no longer with us but my mum actually goes and stays with my stepmom my stepsisters and half sisters and full blood sisters are all in this picture and we are all able to come together as a family and it took a long time to get there as I said they didn't have necessarily the support that was needed at the time back in the day but um that support is available today and you know, we are happily branded. So I am living proof of what can happen when you get the right supports as well. So um, I just wanted to kind of give a bit of background of my personal story, as well as kind of why I do this professionally now as well. Um, so I'm hoping this is going to skip on to the next slide. So um, challenges with blended families, there is a multitude of them. You are literally trying to bring two family cultures together off the back of what may have been quite a turbulent time, particularly for children. And there is always that looming X in the background. Um, so, you know, you kind of go into this with some preconceived ideas and expectations. And the thing about divorce and the thing about after divorce is nobody is at the same stage emotionally at any point. Even the two people involved who are getting the divorce are not emotionally at the same point throughout the process so when you come to the bit afterwards where you're then trying to move on perhaps with a new partner and bring your children along and your ex is still in the you know in the picture to some degree because you are always going to be a family and that's the biggest 
misconception that I hear is, oh, it's only till the kids grow up. It's only till they stop, um, you know, going to school that I have to deal with my ex. No, you will be a family for life. You will always be a family. You will always be in each other's lives because you have children together. You're just a different shape. And if you're trying to introduce new people into your family and you want them to be accepted, then it's going to take some time and some patience and some compassion because everybody is going to be at different emotional stages your children you and your ex and the best advice I can give anybody who's embarking on this journey and looking to try and introduce a new partner is to if possible try and let your ex know before your children and actually put some steps in place to try and make that transition as an introduction as easy as possible because it is always um a challenge um because it's a, it's an adjustment it's change and despite the fact as human beings we're actually really really good at change none of us particularly like it we like routine we like what's familiar and your family's already been through a big change in terms of the divorce already let alone in the acceptance of a new partner so to get off on the right foot or you know to stand the best chance i'd say really take it slow don't rush it and think about the steps of how you're going to introduce your new partner and trying to get your ex on board if that's possible and it's not always possible it depends on the circumstances but if possible try and you know get them on board too because one of the things to consider is if your ex met someone new and that person was going to be spending time with your children you'd want to know who they are you would want to know that they're a good person and the influence that they're going to have on your kids because our innate fear as parents is that we're going to lose our children that this new person is going to come in and you know disrupt things and even the best co-parenting relationships that have been working pretty well up to up until this point the introduction of a new partner from either parent does tend to upset the appetite cart because it's an adjustment and so you need to move at the pace that your family allows and be respectful of the fact that everybody has got their own emotional journey that they're going through in terms of accepting this new blended reality so take it easy because you can't undo first impressions particularly with children it's really important that you think this stuff through and you don't rush it um when you get past the point of introduction and you're you know perhaps at the point where you're trying to actually come together as a blended fa blended family conflict is inevitable you're not going to get away from it you're literally pulling two families together and, you know, it's the same as when you get married and, you know, there's that that those jokes about the in-laws. There's a reason for that. So you've got two different family cultures that you're trying to meld together. And, you know, there is going to be conflict. You know, you've got different routines, different approaches to discipline, different values, different experiences. Uh, so people are at different emotional stages in the in the journey of acceptance. Conflict's going to happen it's it's normal it's completely normal we'll dive into it in a bit more detail later about how to handle that but just you know try and approach it with as much empathy and understanding and calmness as possible so if you need to go and take five and come back do that if you need you know people to step out and and take time you don't have to always feel like you have to resolve in the moment you know you can give yourself a bit of time to sort of calm and think rationally because sometimes we can't do that in the moment so conflict's inevitable there's there's things you can do to try and manage it and we'll come on to that later <clears throat> and then the other thing is the difference in roles so um you know Sarah touched on this earlier when you blend a family suddenly you've got new family members coming in and also people start to take on different roles so if you know your children suddenly going to have step siblings who are going to be older or younger than them they're going to take on a different role of being an older or a younger sibling if you you know your partner is going to be taking on the role of being a step parent your ex is going to take on the role of being the ex and even just negotiating that can be a challenge in terms of your expectations of each other now you're no longer married and the way you speak to one another so everybody's got a different role and those roles will slightly change and adjust as you blend your family and this is daunting for everyone involved children and adults alike so again you need to just sort of take it carefully and with some compassion and just realize that you're all human beings at the end of the day 
you're all going to have good days and bad days and you're all trying to adjust to this new normal and until you adjust to that there's probably going to be some uncomfortable moments or difficult behavior and that's just part of us learning to accept a new normal and that's the same with everyone in every you know walk of life whether it's you know a new job or as I said whether it's like a new um family coming together because of marriage you know it's the same thing there's there's some adjustments to be made so just you know take that into account that you know that will also be going on for people as well um so the one of the key things to any relationship you know communication is king and especially if you're trying to then come together as a family and it's the thing that if that breaks down causes the most pain and um difficulty and to be honest it's it's a it's a key factor as to why marriages break down too in terms of you know generally parents aren't communicating particularly well at the point of getting divorced so when you're then trying to come together and blend you're trying to learn from that and as I said your ex is still part of your blended family so you need to really focus on communication in terms of you and your ex-partner you and your new partner and then also the the children and the family as a whole so something that I encourage for everyone regardless of your situation with your blending or divorced or married or whatever is active listening and I think we all need to do better at this because we are all very distracted these days with our phones and alerts and our watch pinging and whatever is you know watching some TikTok video whatever it is we're not really in the room we're not really giving the person who's talking to us our attention there and and holding eye contact and actively listening and sometimes you've got to listen to what they're saying and how they're saying it and how they're feeling because particularly when there are issues that are arising you can nip these in the bud a lot earlier if you see them coming and if you're actively listening if you're a bit distracted or not really you're hearing them but you're not listening then that's when things will start to escalate quite quickly because you've missed the warning signs early on so trying to create a family dynamic where you actively listen to one another that you give each other you know the time and attention and support because that means that that person that's talking to you whether it's your partner or your child or your stepchild whatever it whoever it is it makes them feel valued it makes them feel heard it makes them feel that they're not on their own and that it's okay to maybe feel the way they're feeling because they've got someone who's listening to them and is willing to try and understand their perspective. So it's really, really important. Active listening is number one. The other thing that works really well is family meetings. And we'll come on a bit later on to rituals and um, that you can do, but particularly um, trying to bring the family together to look at kind of having that open forum for discussion and resolving conflict, but also making decisions together. It doesn't have to just be focused on there's an issue we all need to sit down and talk about it you know, um, that sort of is naturally going to fill everyone with dread. The moment you kind of say family meeting, everyone's going to roll their eyes and go, oh, I I'm, I'm need to go and do something else because they don't want to be there. But actually having those family meetings as, you know, also ability to create better communication, strengthen bonds, make decisions, be involved in the family and where the family's going and maybe creating some of those rituals and creating some of those new traditions that we'll come on to later. So family meetings are, are really great tool to help you kind of get on the same page and make everybody feel like they're involved and not everyone is going to want to necessarily be involved all of the time and again you need to work at people's pace I'm thinking particularly teenagers um empathy and understanding throughout you'll you'll see throughout this presentation it's all about realizing that everybody's trying to adjust to something that's new everybody's going to have their own fears and if you can understand where someone's coming from and understand the fear that they're having and you can get to the root cause of that and do something about it then you're going to fare a lot better than just dealing with the symptom which could be some behavior that you don't really like and you're dealing with that behavior in that moment but you're not getting to the root cause of the problem which comes back to that active listening and open communication and really trying to see this as it's a phase and it's a transition and it's something that you're all trying to go through so that you can be a family at the end of it because everybody wants to be part of this family everybody wants to feel loved and supported and feel like they belong and ultimately that's what you're working for so try and 
give as much empathy and understanding within reason don't sort of turn a blind eye to you know certain behaviors that needs to be addressed but try and be empathetic where possible that goes for your ex as well um so then how you practically do this is looking at establishing new boundaries and roles within the family so creating family rules so thinking about you know what you want your family to actually spending some time consciously thinking with your partner and then involving the children how you want your family to work what you want the dynamic to be what are your values what are you what behavior are you going to encourage where can you get on the same page and sort of have some consistency because kids need consistency and when they've been through a divorce and a separation of their parents you know that's the number one that I talk about with um, co-parents as well who are going through divorce is trying to provide that consistency throughout that process but then it's really important to continue that afterwards and again if you can have some consistency between your home and your ex's home that will really help because remember your ex is still part of your blended family they are not in a different camp they are part of this too so some consistency is is key and if you can get on the same page brilliant if you can't then at least agree how that's going to work in terms of in your household with your partner and how you're going to back each other up and be consistent and provide a united front and then have a co-parenting plan in place if possible with your ex and what's reasonable of this is how it works in my home this is how it works in your home and make sure the kids are aware of both so that there's still consistency even if it's dads is slightly different to mums but they know the difference that's still consistency um assigning roles so this it can be quite tricky because if you have children that live with you most of the time and then children who visit, then it might not seem fair to then make the children who visit do the same amount of responsibility and roles within the home as what the children who live there permanently do. But in all honesty, kids don't see the difference. And I remember as a child getting really frustrated with the fact that me and my sister were made to clear up after dinner. and My stepbrother got off lightly because he only came at the weekends. He'd never seemed to have to clear up as much. Kids notice that sort of stuff and it's and it it bugs them. You've got to show that things are fair and you have to um they may not be there all the time, but then they're not clearing up on the days they're not there. But when they are there, if they're gonna if you, if for example it is a case of you know the kids clear up after dinner, everybody has to muck in. There can't be any preferential treatment because kids really notice that stuff. Um, so that comes back to the kind of creating the rules and the family dynamic, agree what that is and make sure it's fair for everyone because that's the sort of stuff that will start to rub and can start off really small, but then create a dynamic of and a culture that that doesn't sort of mesh together and create some resentment. Um, and along those lines is try and get, you know, the siblings and step siblings or half siblings to um, also create their own relationship and allow that to grow and allow that to evolve and provide opportunities for that don't force it but provide opportunities for them to actually come together as siblings and to feel that they are united one of the things that I love most about being in a blended family is the fact that I am one of six if I wasn't in a blended family I'd be one of two and I can honestly say my close the, the sibling I'm closest to is my probably my half sister um rather than you know, rather than the full blood we have never ever been put up against one another or felt that we weren't a family or that there was any preferential treatment and that's a really I love the fact that that there's so many of us and that we come on mass and I don't differentiate between any half step or full blood siblings ever none of us do and that's what you really want them to feel like we're siblings it doesn't really matter how much blood we share and that's, you know, really where you want to try and get to if possible. So try and encourage them to have their own relationship. Don't feel that you have to manage it all the time or be involved all the time. And also let them figure stuff out for themselves as well. You know, in terms of they need to maybe have an argument without you jumping in. They need to establish their own boundaries and their own relationship within reason. Um. Other things to consider, um, speaking of kind of allowing them to create their own relationships, is make sure you still have quality time one on one. So something that I've seen happen quite a lot, particularly is when introducing a new partner, is this new partner is introduced 
and it's a whole night stay and suddenly the kids feel like they just lost mum or they just lost dad because all of a sudden this person's going to be there all of the time and then again resentment can creep in making sure you have one-on-one time with each of your children is really really important for their development regardless of whether you're divorced or not actually but particularly if you're blending they need to still feel that they have access to their parent that they have access to to one-on-one time and you can nurture them and see them and hear them and they can then express any any feelings that they have that maybe they want to share with you but not with the wider family you need to give those options and keep those lines of communication going and also just in make them feel that they're not losing their parent because as much as the fear from parents is they're going to lose their child children fear the same thing of losing mum or dad because they've got a new partner or because they've got new kids or because there's other people around it's wonderful as i said a minute ago being on mass and being part of a big family but you still need to nurture those those one-to-one relationships and again a bit like with the siblings if you can encourage the step parents and step children to spend some time together again give them the option but don't force it because if you force someone if you force your partner on your children that or vice versa it's not going to bode well it you know relationships need to be organic it's kind of creating the environment for those and opportunities for those things to happen but don't force them because it would just go against what you're trying to achieve and with that respect individuality you know em- embrace their distinctive qualities and interests and backgrounds and make sure everyone feels valued you know it's not a one-size-fits-all it is two family cultures coming together and family is built up of individuals. They are not a flock of sheep. It cannot be one size fits all. Everybody is an individual and you need to really respect and nurture that and make sure that the children feel really comfortable in expressing themselves and being who they are. And especially, you know, growing up where none of us are particularly sure of who we are and we all have those moments and there's going to be pressures from school and social circles and everything. You want to know that home is a safe place where I can be myself. And that's what you really want to create for the children, especially when they've been through so much change. So, you know, really respect individuality and then creating new traditions. And as Sarah said, with the festive season coming up, you know, it's very apt that you know, we think we start to really think about our traditions. And the thing is, is to really think about respecting old traditions and also incorporating new ones. This is a really sort of it's a bit of a balancing act. It's a bit of a juggle act between, you know, going all new and holding on to the old. And there are will be some, you'd be surprised how many of us actually really love our own Christmas, the way Christmas used to be. The amount of couples who get together and still spend Christmas with their, with their, with their own families until, you know, maybe children or whatever come along. Um, they don't really mix because they like it their way. I actually did a family Christmas with a friend last year and realised that, you know, my Christmas is very different to her Christmas and although her Christmas was lovely it wasn't my Christmas and you know we all kind of have a little bit of that so thinking about think about it early agree with your ex in terms of where the children are going to be don't be wedded to one particular day it's a it's a festive season you may have to be a bit flexible in terms of when you're spending time with children but ultimately it's about creating that feel of Christmas it's not about the 25th of December um and you know get establish how you're then going to spend that day or what you're going to do or how you're going to make a special and what traditions you want to bring over and what you want to start new and involve the the family this is a great conversation for one of those family meetings this is a great time to kind of get everyone's points of view and you're not necessarily going to please everyone or maybe you have to do things you know one year like this and then next year we're going to try it like that until you kind of get into your groove and get into your kind of flow of how you're going to do Christmas traditions have to start somewhere you've got an opportunity now to take the best of what's been done before and make it better and involve everyone But again, don't push it. Don't get disappointed or disheartened if the kids don't want to engage in the way that you want to. Um, They are little human beings who are trying to deal with a lot of change. And just because it doesn't go the way you want it this year doesn't mean it won't in the future. Again, you've got to give time and patience and compassion, all of those good things. Um, But plan early is what I would say. Um, And... um, yeah, put some time and, and thought into it. 
um, there is a lot more people to consider because you've also got to think of the wider extended families just got a lot bigger as well. So there'll be more expectations on you potentially and on the children and people who want to see the children, i.e. extra grandparents, extra cousins, extra, extra, extra. So there's a lot to contend, to contend with with a blended family. Um, my Christmas is last a week because it takes me that long to get around all the family. Um, still now, I'm 36, it's no different to when I was two. Uh, we still have a lot of families to get around. I love it, but it just takes a lot of planning. Um, and then kind of overall going forward, you're trying to create an, a positive family culture. You're trying to create a healthy happy dynamic that everyone can thrive in um some just tips of how to do that nature is an absolute tonic for everything it releases endorphins oxytocin uh, serotonin all the feel good, good hormones if you are dealing with conflict if you are getting on top of one another if um you just need some space out there is always outdoors that is in even in this weather, if you wrap up warm, you can get out, you can get some fresh air. There's some fantastic things you can do as a family to to build bonds, despite regardless of age. Um, but also it's a really it's just an absolute gem in terms of calming things down, going for a walk, whatever it is. It's always available to you. Don't feel cooped up. Take a break take one of the children out if they need to if they need that one-on-one -on -one time or actually go out and enjoy being outside as a family as I said you get a natural um download of all the feel-good hormones so everyone generally feels a little bit calmer and has more clarity and feels good being outside so it's on your doorstep make the most of it another um great option is families coming together around cooking we all have to eat it's something we all have to do. It's an obvious one to bring everyone together. Maybe that's a ritual or a routine or a consistency that you want to kind of bring in is that you all eat together and then maybe, you know, a day of the week you cook together or you take it in turns, depending on how old your children are. You might, oh, they may have teenagers that you want to get involved. Again, preparing a meal, it's wholesome. It's um, inclusive. It's a great opportunity to bring the family together. And the other thing is game nights, whether that's in or out, a little bit of you know friendly competitiveness um a little bit of you know bringing together having teams working together it's all of those things that you know we we get fed at work don't we with the kind of you know team building things it's no different you're still building a team as a family it's the same thing you want to create those same opportunities to to pull out each other's strengths and to lean on one another and these are just some options to kind of create that culture and then that opens up that those connections and communication and bring some fun into it because ultimately you want to have fun together you don't want it to just be a case of we're here to you know tell them what to do and do chores and pick up the pieces and tell them to do your homework you want to create a culture of fun and support um but it's not always going to be fun as i mentioned <laughs> earlier there is um inevitably going to be conflict um open communication i've said it all the way through but it's really 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 key having the one-on-one -on -one time having the family meetings are just some options to enable that you to do that active listening um but another really good skill that actually i'm really disappointed isn't actually taught in school is how to deal with conflict and we have it in you know corporates now do it corporations train people on you know conflict management but we don't teach our kids how to get their point across in an argument or if they're feeling um agitated or triggered like how to calm themselves down I said go and have a walk go and take five minutes count to ten you know all of these skills you know you can teach your children you can you can teach and you can learn as a family so you can have a family culture of how do you raise an issue and then how do you deal with that issue and instead it's trying to get to the cause not just dealing with a symptom um but actually putting some process if you like in place to actually kind of help manage that and thinking about ahead how you're going to manage that and what you're going to do and what are the behaviors and what are the values and then giving your kids the skills to do that and not just the kids, each other as well. As the parents, you're leading from the front. Uh, we are all products of our environment. As I mentioned earlier, there is no coincidence as to why me and my siblings got divorced. There is 
absolutely a correlation between how your parents act and how you then act as children and what you then do in adult life. So you need to show them how you calm yourself down when you're triggered, how you deal with the conflict and show them, you know, that you are human. You're not always going to get it right, but lead from the front and create a culture of actually trying to get on the front foot of conflict because you know it's going to happen. And if you really are struggling with that, then of course, well, you can look at mediation, family therapy and um, coaching um, that sort of thing to to help you there's plenty of options out there um as I said you know there is coaches there's counsellors there's support groups um I have a kin app which is a community of parents um who are blended co-parenting still together second time married whatever it is you know there are there's that app there's other options out there as well but also investing in yourself so you can handle conflict, you can handle these conversations, you can think about active listening and get the support you need. And then also the support for you and your partner, because ultimately you're creating this family together. So you need to provide that that unit, that core of this is how our family dynamic is going to work. And then you need to be able to back that up with your actions and hold each other to account and support one another. And so that you can then lead from the front and support the children. So you need to come together with your partner and if possible, your ex too, even better. I'm not to say that you have to go on holiday with them. I think there's a bit of a misconception at the moment that you're not co-parenting well unless you're holidaying with your ex like Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin. That is complete nonsense. It doesn't mean you failed at co-parenting if you don't particularly like your ex and are quite glad you're not married to them anymore. But it doesn't mean that you can't work together for the kids and, you know, get on and be at you know, social events and support one another in introducing new partners because it's for the best, the benefit of your blended family as a whole, because you are part of that blended family. You're all a blended family. Um so um so yeah, looking at your own self-care, your own relationship with your partner and putting some time and effort into the foundations of that and how you want the dynamic thinking about it. Uh, Support groups are a great source of support. And then of course there is family therapy as well should you need it um you know from one-to-one coaching therapy that sort of thing and that's that's the end of my presentation if anyone's got questions wow that was great that was great I've made some notes actually here as as you've been going along um your week-long Christmas sounds like quite a challenge (laughs) it's a marathon (laughs) not a sprint that's for sure yeah it's amazing Christmas dinners um I did we, yeah I, we vary a little bit so it's not completely just turkey after turkey after turkey um but yeah and in fact I'm actually starting this Saturday is my first Christmas outing um this Saturday with family so I'm seeing my stepmom and some of my relatives this this weekend so I'm trying to get in there early because I've got little ones so we're now sort of saying we don't want to keep traveling around all the time because they just want to stay and play with their presents so to try and ease the week a little bit we're starting this weekend it is a, it is a military operation isn't it yeah right um can we circle back to um I suppose the beginning of the blended family idea really um we've got a question um about uh if you've got any tips for the introduction part of this essentially you know best practices what works what doesn't should the ex-partner meet the new one um are there any tied and tried and tested kind of um I don't know time frames techniques tips for the introduction bit yeah so um time frames is always a tricky one because there isn't a kind of when you get to six months then you're serious and therefore you then you should in, um you know introduce your kids and it will take this long, like it's not, we don't work like that. So timeframes are completely subjective, but I would say that you need to be really, 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 really sure and then probably give it six months um, before introducing them. And I would say if you have the relationship with your ex that you can introduce your ex to your new partner first, I would do so because as I said, the biggest fear for any parent is losing their child. and the moment you get divorced or separated, you're fighting or, or your concern is, am I, I'm not going to see them every day. And that's the biggest, like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to be with them all the time. I'm going to lose them. 
And then the next thing is, my ex has now met someone new, I'm going to be replaced. And this new person is is making a, you know, a play for my role in my children's life. And of course, they're not. And there's absolutely room for everyone. And, you know, three out of four people do go on to remarry. So it's most likely that your ex will meet someone else and you will meet someone else. But it's still that fear. And if you can get around that fear by introducing the person to your ex, so they've at least met them first. So then when it comes to telling your children, I've met someone new and mum or dad has also met them and they're okay with this, it means that the children have less of a hurdle in terms of acceptance because it feels like mum and dad are on the same page. Even though mum and dad aren't together anymore, they are both this person's okay and has had the okay. And there's none of this sort of, oh, well, I feel like I'm being, I'm betraying one of my parents by meeting this new person. I want to be supportive of mum or dad's new relationship, but I don't want to hurt my other parent. And actually, I still wish my mum and dad were together and I maybe haven't got my head around that. So there's all these things that you actually get over if you can say, you know, we're not getting back together and actually I have met somebody else and the other parent's okay with that. And in fact, they've actually met them. And then when they circle back with the other parent, it's like, yes, and they were very lovely or I think you'll get on fine and you don't have to worry about me. Is that reassurance and consistent message that the children are getting? So if you can get to that point, brilliant. If you can't get to the point of actually meeting, at least letting your ex know, I've met someone new, I would like to introduce them to the children. This, you know, I would really like your support in this or telling them together. You know, I mean, if if it were me, I would personally want to know who my children were going to be spending time with. I think that's that's a, a reasonable request. And I think boot on the other foot, most parents would feel the same if it was the other way around. I think quite often the the mistake, if you like, I see is that people get really excited about their new relationship and they get carried away and then they they get a little bit too carried away and either introduced too soon don't run it by the ex or you know don't go through the the process to bring the children along um and then introduce them and it goes flat because they haven't done the groundwork for kind of prepping and preparing the children and preparing the ex partner And so already you're kind of on to a a back foot and you want this person, if you're serious about this relationship, serious enough to introduce them to your children, that it's worth taking the time to get it right because you want it to go well. Ultimately, you want to get to that happy blended family. So you want to give them the best opportunity to get on with your kids too. So you don't want to be giving them any kind of, you know, handicap from the get go by not by rushing the process. But then also when it comes to actually meeting them, a simple coffee or a park date or something that's no more than like a couple of hours tops and then you go away with your children and spend some one-on-one time with them because the worst thing you can do and I see it all the time is they go out for dinner or bowling or whatever and then they're staying over and the kids are sent to bed and they've had no time to process or spend any time with that parent and suddenly they think I've lost my parent I don't like this person. They've come in, they've taken over. It's not me and dad or me and mum anymore. I'm being pushed out. I don't like him. It's all their fault. And the moment you've got this um, perception, it's really hard to step back from that. First impressions do count. You know, we all try to say we're open-minded and we're not judgmental, but we are. (laughs) We do. That's human nature. And so you're, again, you want your children to accept this person. You want this person to get on with your children like take it gradually and make sure that your kids can then ask you the questions that they want to ask like are we still going to have our cinema nights are we still going to have are you still going to do this with me you know children are innately selfish god love them but they are they want to know how Mm -hmm. it's going to affect them because they're to them they are the most important person in their world and they don't have the level of responsibility that that we have So you need to give them that reassurance and think about the questions that they're going to have. And if you can kind of create a scenario where it is gradual, it is supported, it's supported by your ex-partner, they're getting a consistent message 
and it's gradual they will come along that journey a lot quicker but you need to take time don't get carried away and then wonder why your children aren't accepting your new partner okay so if despite best intentions things didn't go so well first time with the introduction so perhaps somebody did introduce a partner a little early and we're talking here about a situation with teenage girls and the teenage girls still won't warm to mum's new partner and we're a few years down the line now what kind of work can you or what kind of tips can you suggest there to kind of um I suppose not repair well I suppose it is repair really it's how to manage that connection between yeah. them really yeah so again you need to get to root cause not symptoms so speaking to the girls understanding what their issues are and taking responsibility of saying I realize that I got carried away and I rushed things and I am sorry that I didn't take into account your feelings at the time and I'm sorry that I did that and I can see that we're in this situation now because I pushed you and I shouldn't have done that what I'd really like to do is try and repair it because actually I love this man and he is a good person and he really wants to be in your life and I really want that to happen too he's not going anywhere and I really want us to all come together but I realize that we need to do things differently and you know speak to them admit you know take responsibility for what's what's happened a couple of years ago and listen to active listen active listening listen to what their concerns and issues are and you know ask them can we please try and move forward and can we do this at your pace but can we you know start to look at doing something with him or you know can we start to sort of include him I don't know what the situation is in terms of some obvious steps in terms of what they're doing or what their setup is and then also I would when the time's right get him to have a conversation with them as well about I know that you haven't warmed to me I this is my intention I love your mum I'd really like us to try and get on. Can we go and do something and try and build that way? But it's it's baby steps and it's just being really human about it and going, I, I messed up and I've caused this and I'm completely understand where you're coming from and I'm sorry. How can we work together to fix it? Good. I like that. Um, you're going to be my go-to person every time I've got an issue. I call you all the time. <laughs> um, parallel parenting yeah um what are your thoughts on parallel parenting and can it exist in a blended family scenario but there are definitely circumstances in which parallel parenting is necessary um but i would say unless it's it's a case of you know abuse of some sort then you may start there because it's been a tricky divorce or married end of marriage but I would say that if you're trying to get to a blended family unless there are genuine sort of um as I said abuse or or you know um risks involved then you want to try and move forward to a blended outcome mm-hmm. um that means doing some work um separately and it may be that you're going to do the work and the other parent isn't but, yes by the situation you might be in the parenting parallel situation to start with yeah. Yeah, exactly but even by you doing the work you are then be going to have the skills and the tools and the strategies to be able to buffer some of that and also importantly if you're in a parallel parenting situation that impacts the children so you're then able to pass on some of those skills to them I get asked a lot, how do you co-parent with a narcissist, for example? Mm -hmm. And is it worth doing work myself when I'm not the problem? Having the skills to be able to deal with a narcissist, being able to pass those skills on to your children who are also dealing with a narcissistic parent, because it doesn't just stop with one, one relationship, is really, really helpful. 
And that will enable you to move on as a blended family, even if you have to ring fence that person a little, little bit, but it will give you the boundaries at least, which is really important for any healthy relationship has to have boundaries and particularly unhealthy relationships really need boundaries. So at least it gives you those structures and boundaries and behaviors for you to be able to handle that individual. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, oh, I'm not sure how uh, how much input you and I are going to have on this, Nicole, but um, how to manage finances, including property, et cetera, if planning to get into a blended family? I think it goes back to communication, really. What do you think? Yeah, again, I think there's I think there's certain conversations that you need to have up front with a partner, um, particularly if you're blended and therefore, you know, you have other um sort of financial responsibilities outside of what will be your family unit if you like your you know the relationship you're having with your partner I think there's conversation to be had and it kind of comes back to the family that you want to create and your dynamic and there are conversations to be had around roles around communication around finances around values and behaviors and all of those those things that contribute to what's your dynamic going to be like going forward how are you then going to deal with x y and z what's your perspective on education schooling discipline values money how's that going to be shared time it's all of those things that we need to have a conversation about actually going into any relationship but particularly if you've got a blended family and you've got other influences and other family members that you know need to be considered so I'd say that that's an upfront conversation you need to agree as a couple and you might want to get some support with agreeing what that is because it's not one size fits all no family is the same um but what's going to work best for you and so there's no resentments as well because it's okay to agree a certain thing in terms of child maintenance or support or you know schooling or whatever it is and then you get a new partner and suddenly oh, I want to, I want to do this, but my money's there and we want to buy a house and my money's there. And suddenly you get resentments before you've even started. So just having an upfront conversation and knowing what it is and having a plan and what you want and what, you know, what your family is going to look like and what your aspirations are. And that goes for finances as well as everything else is, is really important to get into that relationship. And that's a conversation you need to be having before you're introducing your kids. That's what I mean. You're really serious about this person. You've, you've, you've got this kind of worked out exactly what you're going to be doing in terms of as a couple, as a family going forward, this is serious. That's a conversation that predates introducing anyone, I'd say. Oh, good. Um, the, um, where are we? The notion when, or the situation rather, when um, you're creating a blended family but the kids are a bit older so they might be late teens they might be early 20s they might be kids with pretty independent lives um any top tips for creating connections with with you know young adults older children yeah sometimes I actually think the older ones are more tricky than the younger ones um and adult children in particular um because they come with more opinions (laughs) <laughs> and more expectations and um they also tend to be told more than they should because they're adults but they're still children um your children are always your children even when they're adult um I would say again it's kind of looking for opportunities to bring people together it's looking for opportunities and activities and things that you can do um and don't necessarily see age as a barrier in terms of um having younger you might be blending with a much younger um you know someone with younger children and you might have much older children it doesn't mean that the children because there's an age gap can't blend I would still say the same rules apply in terms of inclusion in terms of um one-on-one time as well as looking for opportunities to do things and bring them together and it can work really effectively um to you know from my own personal experience my siblings are 19 and 17 years older than me and I'm probably closest to my sister who's 17 years older than I am so you know at the time of 
of us getting together as a family I was very small and she was in her teens and more interested in going out and getting drunk with her friends and spending time with me but it didn't stop us having a relationship or doing things and having a cool older sister was actually really cool and she got to you know I don't know go and watch the latest Disney film without you know her friends knowing because she could take a little sister and I was a good excuse you know there's there's things that happen that you can kind of create moments and let them have a relationship and it doesn't have to be that an age is an issue I think the same rules apply one-on-one time bringing them together letting them have a relationship giving them the opportunity to nurture that relationship um you know it's it was it's great for both sides sometimes it can be a case of I always wanted a younger sibling I always wanted an older sibling it can work really well if you let it organically grow and don't assume that because they're older they're not going to be interested keep them involved you'd be surprised I love that that's cool that's very cool um last one really because I think look time wise we're, we're really out and it's just kind of I suppose um maybe we're, we're looking for a little bit of um offering some confidence to others really here it's kind of um uh we've got somebody asking about what awkward moments you can recall like when you're faced with those uh those lifestyle um not lifestyle those uh life events such as you know was it your dad or your stepdad who was giving you away on your wedding day and who t- attended the graduation day and did they go well um you know what are your thoughts when you look back on that sort of thing and and do you have any tips to handle those um once in a lifetime moments when you've got a blended family yeah um they they can be really tricky if you haven't put the ty- the work in beforehand i've seen them go really well i've seen them go really badly as well um i had a one particular client who I was asked to work with the parents, the mother, the the lady who hired me was in her thirties about to get married. Mum and dad still couldn't be in the same room 17 years down the line. So wow. the hot table was going to be a nightmare. Um, the, who was giving her away, everything was just really contentious. So if you don't kind of put the groundwork in early on, these things can become a much bigger problem later mm. on down the line. Um, and actually there's, there's something about particularly when you are blending and you are having you have a new partner being still that angry about your ex is really sending a certain message to your new partner and I've seen that go both ways um so I've seen with a client that you know mum still really 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 couldn't stand dad and then it and really got very upset at a family gathering where my dad's partner was there and there was some pretty bad behavior that occurred during that gathering that party and it made the new partner question well if you really cared about me why would you be so upset and so worked up about him yeah it really undermines your new relationship Mm -hmm. and you know that's why it's really important to do the work in terms of being ready to move on and it's not just filling a hole or filling a void. It's actually, I'm ready to, to, to date again. I'm ready to be in a relationship. I've let go of the stuff in the past because letting go, you know, is, is so important for moving forwards. And this person, if you've got kids with them, they are going to be in your life for the rest of your life. It's not till the kids leave home or leave school. There will be weddings. There will be graduations. There will be, you know, shared Christmases when you've got grandkids you know all of those things you want to be able to come together and enjoy them and I've also seen it go really well um and actually um a a personal story my dad um and my stepmom my stepmom was at a wedding and her ex-husband was there with his partner who he'd had an affair with and left my stepmom so she was very upset about what occurred my mum and my dad and her had met many years later and um, they were sat, my my dad and my stepmom were sat with a group of friends at this wedding and her ex-husband and his wife were sat on their own on another table. And my dad turned around to my stepmom and said, you should go and invite them over for a drink. Come tell them to join us. I, she went, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. She'd been wedded to this story of I hate him because he had an affair for so long. So like, I'm not doing that. Nope. And he went, do you love me? She said, of course I do. Right. So there's no issue then, go and invite him for a drink. And she was like, well, let me finish my wine first. And she went over. And I think her ex-husband looked so nervous and didn't know what was going to happen. And she invited them over for a drink. And do you know what? They got on like a house on fire after that. No issue ever since. Because she proved that she was in love with my dad. So actually she needed to let go of the past 
hurts of what had happened with the previous relationship. And, you know, it it meant that when my step brother and sister got married, they could all be together and there could be a top table and all of those things, because actually you're just wedded to an old story that doesn't really serve you anymore and doesn't even, it's not even relevant anymore because you've moved on, but you've just got stuck in that habit of being um, hateful towards someone or being angry towards someone. But actually, what does it matter? Because she was much happier with my dad. And in fact, she always said afterwards that the other lady did her a favor because otherwise she would never have <laughs> met my dad. So, you know, you, you move on, but sometimes you just need to be reminded that you've moved on and then you need to let it go for you, for your relationship that you're trying to, you know, to progress and also for your family as a whole. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? I think that's a great note to finish on. Um, I love that. Um, I'd love to meet your family, but the right character. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah, lovely. Um, Nicole, thank you very much this evening um, for your time, your presentation, your expertise and your guidance. Um, I feel almost quite festive, actually, now. And I'm the last person to get festive. Um, but I thought that was really helpful. Thank you. Um, the girls have put, obviously, your website and your details in, uh, in the notes. Um, and uh, as I said, this was recorded, so there may be some other uh, viewings going on. Um, it's been an absolutely delightful evening thank you very much i really appreciate you um spending your, your wednesday night with us uh and hopefully we'll see you again maybe next year these sorts of things i'm very keen to um revisit um people's lives move on don't they mm. so you know it, we need to capture keep capturing and uh providing this kind of information for the next people that are facing the kind of the blended family dilemma um mm. challenge um so that's been great thank you very much thank you very uh, Betty, thank you very much for joining us tonight uh we'll see you uh in 2024 as i say please just let us have your suggestions for what like you'd like to hear more about next year and um and it, well we'll see you on the other side crikey it feels odd saying that already we're only in november but um thank you very much really appreciate it bye nicole i'm going to go and have a glass of wine now okay. all right enjoy Bye-bye. Bye.